Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Franziska Bonat. I'm uh, the today's host for the Bite Size Talk. And with me is Robert Petit. He is from the Wyoming Public Health Laboratory and is going to talk about a um, about Bactopia, which is not part of NF Core, but is using NF Core components and uh, NF um, and, and NF Core pipelines. So um, off to you. Awesome. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I I did mute you by mistake. <laughs> uh, you can unmute yourself. I'm sure. There we go. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, don't worry about it. It's it's uh, me rubbing off on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here uh, today. I'll just kind of be introducing you to Bactopia and how I am. I'll give you a few use cases of how I'm using the NF Core, some NF Core components in Bactopia. Uh, but first, a little motivation on how Bactopia came up. Uh, over the last 10 years, we saw a, uh, a, a quite nice growth in the bacterial, uh, the public available bacterial genomes from ENA, SRA, BBBJ. Uh, we went from about 7,500 in 2010 to about 1.5 million. Uh, while that pales in comparison to COVID, which I think is 12 million plus now for bacteria, that is quite a lot. Uh, but over these last 10 years, we've also seen the rise of containers and package managers, such as uh, Docker, Singularity, and Bioconda, uh, and then workflow managers and the curators behind those, such as Nextflow and NFCore. And so in 2010, maybe we couldn't use all the data, uh, but it, it really starts in 2022. It really makes me wonder, can we make use of all these publicly developed genomes? Uh, again, in 2010, I remember passing our passing tar balls with binaries and then email and sequencing uh, uh, instrument uh, groups. Hey, can I, can I get a binary to your assembler and stuff like that? And there was no real sort of, it was just kind of make install and hope it installs. But now in 2022, I, I think we're we're kind of there where, you know, we we have the tools and we have the talent to start gluing all this stuff together uh, and start using these data in our own analyses. And one, you you know, why would we want to use this data? Uh, it's, for example, a, a good example is if you have a small outbreak at, at your uh, local hospital or a foodborne illness that comes out of some carnival or something. And you want to compare your genomes to what's already been sequenced. Uh, that's a, a nice use case of making use of those 1.5 million genomes that are available. And so to address this, uh, Tim Reed, who's at Emory University and was my uh, master's mentor and PhD mentor, uh, him and I developed Bactopia, which is a NextFlow DSL2 pipeline for the complete analysis of bacterial genomes. Uh, you can because it's written in Nextflow, you can go from a single genome to tens of thousands of genomes with uh, a simple parameter change. And uh, we were able to, as it just kind of uh, not necessarily proof of concept be because we wanted to, and uh, we were able to use Bactopia to process 67,000 genomes uh, in just five days using AWS. And a lot of that was, you know, kind of being able to prototype on a laptop or something and then switch to our AWS profile and boom, we're off and going. And that's kind of kudos to Nextflow for most of that. Uh, next, uh, Bactopia, we, we try to include as many NF Core practices as we can uh, to ensure things like reproducibility and audit logs and all that. And again, because it's uh, Nextflow, it's extremely portable and you can go laptop, HPC at your university or something. Uh, between all the cloud platforms within just a few parameter changes. A few highlights about Bactopia. Um, it supports Illumina and Nanopore reads. These can be uh, from your, your local machine or from publicly available databases such as SRA or ENA. Uh, it includes more than 140 bioinformatic tools. Uh, there are 45 Bactopia tools, which are completely separate uh, workflows, which I'll get into shortly. Uh, it's been extensively tested with more than 100 tests, testing more than 10,000 output files. 
it's easily installed through Bioconda, Docker, or Singularity. And it's been, I, I think it's, uh, uh, I've gone through great efforts to make sure it's well documented. Uh, some design principles behind Bactopia. Uh, one, Bactopia requires all tools that are included in it to be available from Bioconda. Uh, the main, one of the main reasons is because it's 2022. Uh, people shouldn't be, they, they, they shouldn't have to figure out how to install a tool now. They should be able to either use a container or some sort of a uh, Conda. It, it should be an easy, simple process. And because Bioconda has the downstream containerization, so every recipe gets a Docker container through uh, BioContainers and a singularity image through Galaxy Project. So we kind of have all those, those tools necessary to kind of start using these uh, immediately. I also require all modules in Bactopia tools also be available from NFCore modules. Uh, and it's, if it's not there, we, we add it. And then yeah, Bactopia should be easy to install and adaptable to the user's needs. And converting to DSL2 has made this much, much easier. There are three sides to Bactopia. Uh, and you can kind of think of these as kind of like checkpoints between the three. There's Bactopia helpers, uh, Bactopia, and Bactopia tools. Uh, the Bactopia helpers kind of help you get started using Bactopia. These are kind of your pre- uh, pre-analysis uh, steps uh, or some, some commands to kind of post-analysis get information. Uh, but one is the Bactopia citations, which will print out citations for uh, all the tools used by Bactopia. The Bactopia data sets command allows, allows you to go and download publicly available data sets that can uh, supplement your analysis. And these include things like RefSeq and GenBank uh, sketches as well as PubMST schemas uh, and many more. The Bactopia download uh, command will pre-build Conda uh, environments for you, pull Docker containers or download singularity images uh, as a pre-step so that way you're, you're not doing that while you're uh, starting the process in Nextflow. The Bactopia prepare will create a file with file name similar to the sample sheet that you see in many of the NFCore pipelines. Uh, this allows you to really process as many genomes as you want. And the Bactopia search, one of my favorite, it, it takes a query, uh, queries ENA's API, then returns a list of experiment accessions that you can then feed to Bactopia to uh, download and start processing. The Bactopia, the main Bactopia uh, pipeline includes all the standard steps in a bacterial genome analysis, uh, gather samples, QC the read, the simple genomes, uh, you can sketch your genomes and then query it against uh, RefSeq, GenBank, call SNPs, all the standard things that you would uh, expect in a bacterial uh, genomics pipeline. It allows Illumina nanopore reads, SRA accessions, NCBI accessions, or uh, local assemblies if for some reason that's all you have. There are all, also some uh, kind of jump off where basically the the genome will start, the sample will stop being processed if there's uh, things such as poor quality, uh, something that's gonna likely cause downstream failure, uh, Bactopia will do its best to catch those. So that way it doesn't stop the whole, the whole pipeline. And then once everything's processed, you get it in this nice standard uh, directory structure. And it's this directory structure that Bactopia tools take advantage of. And so Bactopia tools are, essentially more workflows for more science. Uh, by looking at that standard directory structure, you can run a Bactopia tool, which can include a single tool like Cleverate or TV Profiler, and then it'll go and find the files that it needs and run everything for you. And then you can connect uh, multiple uh, modules together for something like a pan-genome type analysis where you're uh, running Pirate and creating a core genome phylogeny. And the Bactopia tools, because of the directory structure, will find all those files that you need. And there are currently more than 45 different Bactopia tools. And because it, again, DSL2, uh, I've been able to kind of framework this and make it a kind of a streamlined process. So yeah, and just a few steps, you can go from raw data to investigating results. Uh, sequence your genomes, install Bactopia, 
uh, through Conda, Docker, Singularity. If you want to include public data, you can use Petcopia Search. Uh, if you want to include publicly available data sets, which I always recommend just to supplement your analysis, the Petcopia data sets command. Uh, and then you can create a file of file names to process you know, thousands of genomes if you want to uh, using Bactopia prepare. And then, yeah, you use the Bactopia command to process all your, your samples uh, one at, uh, independently and then further analyze these with Bactopia tools. And by the end of it, uh, you just have a bunch of output files that you get to sift through and figure out, can we answer our question that we hopefully asked before sequenced in these genomes. Uh, but most of this has been uh, made easier and more achievable in Bactopia by adopting NF core components. Uh, and if you're kind of on the outside wondering, you know, what should, should I make an NF core pipeline or should I just keep doing what I'm doing and, you know, uh, start adopting some of their practices? or should I just go do my own thing? I think you're kind of the target audience here. It's like over these next few slides, you can kind of get an idea of how I am making use of uh, numerous NF core components without actually being an NF core uh, pipeline. And yeah, you know, honestly, I don't think it's so much about the NF core practices and components and more so about the people behind NF core. Uh, you jump on the Slack group and you've got a question and there's, there's many, many people that are willing to help out and uh, just, they, they've probably seen it, uh, especially many of the error messages that you kind of come about in bioinformatics. So I think it's a, it's at minimum, you should hop on the, onto the Slack group and, you know, just start participating and uh, get an idea of uh, all the things happening with NextFlow. But here are a few ways I'm using uh, Bactopia as uh, NF core component, or making use of NF core components in Bactopia. First, the NF core library, which is that lib folder in the, uh, all the NF core pipelines. So Bactopia has uh, 45 different workflows that you can execute from a single entry point. So there's a parameter that says, uh, you know, I wanna run the pangenome uh, Bactopia tool, or I wanna run the Bactopia main workflow. And those all come in through the same, uh, main.nf file. And to achieve this, I adapted the, the NF core library because one, it handles all the argument parts and it has super nice outputs. Uh, it does audit it and, and you can set it up to send emails and all that. Also by using that, you kind of set yourself up to be compatible with NF, uh, the Nextflow tower, uh, which is quite nice. But I wanted to be able to programmatically import config and parent, uh, JSON files. So and on the Bactopia side, I have a dynamic import that looks at a workflow config and determines based on that which files it needs to import. And then, yeah, so that way I can basically run 45 plus different workflows from the same, uh, same entry point, which is quite nice because previously it would have been 45 different uh, main dot workflows that, that I was maintaining. Uh, and of course modules in Bactopia, when I converted DSL2, I was suggested, it was suggested to me that, hey, you should consider uh, making use of NFCore modules. And I had previously participated in some of the hackathons and was quite fond of NFCore modules. And so, yeah, it was super easy to say, okay, if I'm gonna include it as a Bactopia tool, it should also be on NFCore modules. And uh, on the Bactopia side, I, I do some slight modifications and these slides will be available later, but there's links kind of compare the two. There's many links in, in these slides. And so some of those modifications are mostly just uh, adapting to use pre-built Conda environments and uh, just kind of the way I import and export and uh, files. I've also adopted a similar uh, PyTest framework for Bactopia that is implemented in core modules. So this allows me to test every step in Bactopia and Bactopia tools. And this has saved my butt quite a bit when it comes to uh, submitting a new release. Typically, uh, it's the Conda side that kind of something has changed with the, the, the package solver. And so this also allows me to use self-hosted GitHub Action Runner. And those modules like GTDB, which use large databases, those are actually being tested with a real database on my 
uh, self-hosted GitHub Action Runner. So there's that side effect, but yes, we're kind of validating uh, indirectly the NF core module. Finally, I used the, the meta.yaml template for documentation. Uh, when I first saw that meta.yaml, I was like, oh, that would be kind of nice to just kind of build documentation from. And so I add stuff like citations and markdown tables and output trees. And then the YAMLs are then used to build the documentation using Jinja2 templates, uh, make docs material and GitHub actions. And so this has really saved me a lot of time by allowing me to write the documentation while building uh, Backtopia. So what's next for Backtopia? Uh, I am always waiting to see what's next for NF Core and uh, kind of in the background saying, hey, should I use this or not? Uh, I'm starting to look into multi-QC modules uh, because Spectopia needs some sort of report generation. There will always be more NF Core modules that I'm submitting because there's always more Backtopia tools I want to submit or implement. And I really have my eyes on the, that issue on Nextflow about the future of the config files because the way I use config files, that, that could have some some downstream effects on Backtopia. I'm interested in making a uh, custom workflow for surveillance here at Backtopia. And the more I use rich click, I just want to rich click everything. So expect to enhance CLI uh, here too. And yeah, don't hesitate to reach out if you think I can help you get started on your uh, non NF Core uh, pipeline and using NF Core modules. So thank you. And I will take any questions uh, folks have. Thank you very much. So uh, I have been able now for everyone to unmute themselves if they have questions. Uh, otherwise, we can start with the one question that is already in the chat, which is from Olaitan. Um, he is asking, it seems like Bactopia is not in the APT repository. Could you work in, on including it? Uh, I, I don't know much about including tools in the app repository. Um, it is available from BioConda, so you can Conda install Backtopia. Um, I think there's there would be many components of Backtopia that aren't in the app repository. Uh, so I don't know how that would work as if it would be something like you would have to add all the dependencies to the app repository. And I think the, the time uh, required for that and the, the learning, I don't have the bandwidth for at the moment. And I think uh, definitely consider uh, using the, the BioConda install. And then from there, you can use Conda, Docker, or Singularity. OK, um, thank you. Are there any more questions from the audience? Um, if not. Um, Oh yeah, here. Actually, yeah, thanks. I do have a follow-up question. It's not really based on the app repository thing. It's the the workflow that, in terms of the different steps that Bactopia does. I didn't get what Robert meant by uh, the final step that talked about something about the analysis. I was wondering what are the specific things, like what's the actual, what are you measuring at the end of the day with Bactopia? specifically in terms of, you know, the omics analysis now? Uh, so it's going to include pretty much all your standard bacterial genomics. So you're going to QC the reads. Uh, how well did you sequence your sample? What's the average read length? All that fun stuff. Uh, then it's going to kind of characterize your, your sample. Uh, what MST schema? Does it have certain antibiotic resistance genes that you may be interested in? Um, does it have SNPs and indels against a reference genome that you selected? Uh, how does it compare to uh, public available genomes? Does it does it look like is it is it what you expected to sequence? So if you thought you sequenced that Staph aureus and it uh, you know it kind of came up as looking more like Enterococcus, like that's something that uh, those are the type of analysis results. And on the Bactopia documentation, there's uh, kind of an overview of the workflow at each step, what's happening, and then uh, output overviews on all the output files that you get for uh, both Bactopia and all the Bactopia tools. And those output give you a description of what's in the uh, each of the files. Okay, thanks. 
So my final question is, I saw you integrated this with Illumina Read and I believe Nanopore Read. So what happened to PacBio? Honestly, I just don't, I, I haven't been exposed to PacBio data much. Uh, and in my, yeah, so far in my analyses and my studies, yeah, we just, I think if, if uh, I start using PacBio, then PacBio data will come in. Otherwise, I think Perfect. I would need support from the community to kind of add that type of, uh, just because I, I don't have the opportunity to use it on a daily basis like I do uh, Illumina Nanopore. So yeah, I would need someone else to kind of help out there. Cool, thanks, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? I don't see anything pop up, so I would like to thank you again, Robert. Uh, everyone else, there is always the chance to ask more questions if they come later at uh, the Bite Size channel on Slack. You, I guess you can also contact Robert directly. Um, and this um, video will also be uploaded to YouTube. And I would like to thank, apart from Robert, of course, uh, the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative, who is um, funding these talks. And thank you, everyone, for joining in.